Hello everyone. Hello and happy Friday. It's Liz here and welcome to another live crochet tutorial on Annie's Facebook page. So uh, I'm live here every Friday at noon Eastern. So come on in and join me. And if you're here, say hello in the chat. Let me know where you're joining from. Um, of course, we're going to do a tutorial today. But while people hop on, I'm going to let you guys know what is new over at Annie's. Um, so today we're going to work on... This is just the catalog, but I want to show you guys uh, what we're going to work on. So we're going to work on this tapestry crochet, and I'm going to show you how to do one of these mug rugs. This is one of our newer pattern booklets, and it's super popular right now. Um, it's a bestseller. I think it's number one on the bestseller. So, and I, the name of the designer escapes me, but she did a great job. There's 12 of these little um, farmhouse mug rugs. So we're gonna talk about that today. Uh, there's um, Ilka from, G hi Liz from Georgia, hello. And there's Wanda, hello Wanda. And Darlene is here from Nova Scotia, hi Darlene. Make sure I didn't miss anybody. Thank you for joining me. Patty and Catherine and Charlotte and Diane are here. Hi, Susan. And um, hello from Belize City. Hello. Antoinette's here from South Africa. Hi, Antoinette. Mary Kelly and Chris are here. Welcome, welcome. And there's Judy from Florida. Hi, Judy. Hi, Cheryl from the Great White North. <laughs> uh, Judah from Alaska. Hi, Judah. Thank you so much for joining me. And let's see, we've got Shantae. I'm gonna show you another new thing while, I, while everyone's saying hello. Uh, Yola says, I'm watching from Belize. This is a brand new issue I just got. It's a special publication. I know it's backwards, but this is from Crochet World. Um, they do special publications. So this is Get Organized, and there are 40 designs in here. So this one's available now. This is just all uh, baskets, different types of organization, crochet patterns, which is really fun. And the last thing I want to tell you really quick before we get right to the tutorial, because it's kind of a long one, we're going to talk about tapestry crochet. I'm going to show you how to change colors. I'm going to show you how to work from the chart. We're going to do a lot of fun stuff. There's Paula from Arkansas, and Angela says hello from Southern California. Hello. Sandra says hi from Idaho. And Sherry from Northern, Wis Jerry, I'm sorry, Jerry from Northern Wisconsin. And Connie says, hello from Mexico City. Hi, Connie. And there's Joyce King. Hello, hello, yay. I'm so happy you guys are here. I just wanna show you because this is something brand new. Um, and next week I'm gonna have an announcement about something new as well. From Annie's, it's a kit. And I just love this so much. So I know I talked about it last week, but I wanna show it one more time. This is the, um, it's called the Moroccan Tile Afghan Club. It's like our other cl clubs, um, but this one is a Moroccan style. It's designed by Linus Gavagerson, and you can get this as a kit where you get a shipment every month with the uh, all the supplies and the pattern, and then there's videos and all that good stuff to help you. So that's what's new. Hi, Anna from Canada. Let me, you guys, um, keep saying hello. Uh, drama's here from Ocean Shores, Washington, but I am going to flip my camera so we can start talking about tapestry crochet. And Lizzie is here from New York, Corning, New York. Hello, Lizzie. Okay, here we go. So hopefully you can see. Okay. Hi, Margaret from Ireland and Diane from Northern Michigan. Let's see. You guys can see this. Okay. So let's talk about tapestry crochet. Patty says hi from Maryland. Hi Patty. Uh, do you know when when we will get our first kit? I don't know. I have I really have no idea Susan. I, I think it probably depends on when you ordered it. So the Mug Rugs uh, booklet, each one, this is the just, this is not the booklet because I have the digital copy, but if you have the digital copy, you can, of course, you have all the charts, right? So each one of these 12 patterns comes with a chart and uh, written instructions. So you're gonna get the written instructions as well as the chart. But for tapestry crochet, it is helpful to work from a chart. So the one we're gonna work on today, and as you can see, I started it. I didn't finish it because if you can tell here, I really messed up this heart. <laughs> um, and I, I'm pretty sure I messed up this one too. But these two look good. But as you can see, um, with this changing color, you get these sort of weird edges, but that's just the nature of this tapestry crochet. 
when you're doing tapestry crochet, and we'll go through it step by step, uh, you're gonna get this sort of just uneven edges on the front and on the back, but it's still sort of reversible unless you're working it in the round. So if you're working it in the round because everything is on the front side and you don't have to turn your work, it, it looks a little neater. So a lot of um, tapestry crochet patterns are worked in the round, you'll notice that. But you can still make it look nice and pretty. And especially from further away, you can't really, you can't really see, you know, that's just the way it looks. And it's nice and thick. And we are working two colors on every row when we do tapestry crochet. So there's lots of different types of color work. Um, there's tapestry, there's mosaic, there's uh, intarsia, and they're all worked differently. I think the main, of course, there's always exceptions, but the main distinguisher from uh, tapestry is that you're using two colors. You, can, you kind of only should do it with two colors. Once you're doing three colors, it gets too much, too much that you're having to work over and it gets a little thick. So we're gonna just do it with two colors today, okay? And Jerry says, are we able to get just the pattern for the kits? No, you have to get the whole kit, Jerry. Um, make sure nobody has any questions. Okay, and if you have any questions um, about anything, just ask them in the chat. I'm gonna keep looking at the chat while we do this. My name is Paulina, watching from Belize. Hooray, hooray. And Joyce is here from Firecre Firecrest, Washington. I just wanna make sure I didn't miss anybody, you guys. Jody says hi from Nebraska and Sandy from Winnipeg. All right, that's it, I think that's it. Look what I did, you guys. So this is a chart. This is what comes in the, the pattern book. So if you get the pattern book, you get a complete chart for everything. But this is too much to do just here. So what I did was I sort of condensed it down like this. But I wanted to show you the chart because it's very important for when you learn tapestry crochet. So we're gonna start with the first row and it goes like that, and then when we turn our work, you're gonna start working this way. So you're gonna have to count your blocks from this way. And then when we go to the row three, you count your blocks from this way, and then you start changing the color. So we'll just do one, one row of solid, right? And as you can see, you can kind of see how I worked over the pink with this. So if you pick colors that maybe don't have as much as a, of a contrast, you may not see that sort of color popping out from underneath. Um, so just experiment with different colors. I'm using a cotton yarn today. Um, this is Lion Brand 24-7 cotton, and I'm using my 3.75 millimeter hook. So with this, you want it kind of tight so you, so you can cover up as much as that color underneath as you can. So let's start with the white, and there's 20 blocks here. So I'm gonna make a chain of 21, so I have my turning chain. And we're gonna start right off with both colors. So let me just do 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Oh darn, hold on. I pulled from the wrong end. We don't want to do that. It'll take forever. So we're going to start with 20 and we're going to add the next color right on top of that, even though the first row is uh, all solid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. And the reason that we're gonna add the second color right, right away, even though the first row is all white, so we're using this as the pink and this as the white. Even though the first row is all white, we wanna add the pink right over top so we can start working right over it um, from the start because if we don't, it's gonna be a different thickness, right? So as you start working up, if you just work single crochets like that, as you start working up, um, it's not gonna be as thick and, you're, and it's gonna have une it's gonna be uneven at the edges. So just sort of drop that over top, right? We're just gonna work right over it. And it's a little tricky, but you'll get used to working over these other strands. So here's the second chain and I'm just laying that piece over it. 
and I'm gonna work a single crochet right over that strand. And I'm working in the back bumps. That's always going to make for a nicer edge. And with something like this, um, I think it does have a border, but it'll be it will be easier for you to work the border into those stitches if you work into the back bumps, which are these little bumps right here. So see how I'm just working my single crochet right over that strand? right from the start. And like I said, you really um, can experiment with different colors here. So you don't have the, the less amount of a contrast that you have, probably the better, because then you won't see that other color poking through. Same thing with working it sort of uh, tight. So that's why I used a smaller hook than I normally would. With this yarn, I would usually use a four, but I want it to be nice and tight so it covers up as much of that strand as possible so that I'm working over it. And then pull that, because it will pop out, so just pull that purple one so it doesn't bunch up in the center or in any stitch. And what I did with this, because I have the digital copy of this booklet, um, what I did was I took a screenshot, right, of the chart. I took a screenshot of it, and then I just put it like in my photos, and I edited it <laughs> to make it bigger and to cut out that other part so I could do the tutorial for you guys. So you could always do that too. If you have the digital copy, um, and you want like a really big chart or you want to be able to write on your chart or whatever, you could do that. Just take a screenshot of it and make it larger. Uh, you know, just go to photos or whatever it is on your computer, crop out the sides, make it larger and print it like that. So you can just write all over it because it's helpful to count your blocks. So each block, and I'm doing single crochets, and each block is one single crochet. I probably should have mentioned that. So that's my last chain there. Okay, so now try to pull it. Don't pull it too hard, but pull it so it's not bubbling up anywhere. So if you look at the back side, you can see if it's like, puckering. So just pull it to straighten it out. See how it is right there a little bit? So what we've done was row one, which was 20 of the white single crochets. And we just, um, we just worked that right over the, the purple. So the reason we did that was because, like I said, so it stays like the same thickness. And so we can just pull up the next color when we start doing the color changes. So this was the front of, you have to always distinguish between the front and the back of your work with this tapestry crochet. So this is the front and I wanna put a little stitch marker here so I know that this is the front. So I'm just gonna, Try to grab a string here and mark it. I don't, I didn't grab a stitch marker, so I'm just gonna use a piece of yarn because it'll get confusing which, which is the front and which is the back. So here's the front. When you turn your work, you wanna make sure that the strand that you have to work over, the purple one, is towards the back so it doesn't, um, show in the front. So let me show you on my sample. So see how all these little pieces right here, we just had to sort of turn them over onto the other side and this is the back side. So I tried to keep them all on the back side so that way on the front side, you don't really see those little strands. Let's see. So we're gonna make sure and it, the yarn does get 
twisted. So just try to keep your yarn from twisting together. Let me just check my scroll here, make sure I didn't miss anybody. If anyone has any questions about this, this is called tapestry crochet. This technique that we're doing, if you just jumped on, is tapestry crochet. We're doing some color work here. It's usually only done with two different colors, and the reason is because um, you're working over a strand. So if you had three different colors and you were working over, you know, two or three strands, it would get too cumbersome. So we're just going to keep it to two when we're doing tapestry. If you do intarsia, then you can use a bunch of different colors because it's just a completely different technique. Okay, so now as we turn our work, I'm going to pull that purple strand up here so I can begin working over it again. Just get yourself situated so it's not tangled. This is the back side, so I'm gonna keep my strands towards the back, which is facing me right now. There's my purple. And according to my chart, I need to work one, we're gonna skip this because it's the same thing. So we're just gonna say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight in the white and this is the good thing about printing out your chart you can write on it so working over the purple we chained up one I don't know if I did that or not and we're gonna go into the first stitch and work a single crochet right over the purple that was one and we need eight so two three, four, five, six, seven, and now on the eighth one we have to change colors. So we did seven, and remember you have to change your color on the last, um, like the last part of the stitch. So we're gonna go under, pull up. Now we're gonna drop the white, so drop it to the front because we're working on the back, and pull up the purple. And as you can see, once we pull up this purple, this chain that we make is gonna be the top of the next stitch. And then the stitch that we're on, which is the eighth, is gonna stay white. So see how that's the top of the next stitch? And now we have to work over the white. So put the white right there so you can work over it. And then go into that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. Now we have these two legs, which that's gonna be the purple stitch, but we only need one purple, so we have to switch again. So drop the purple and pull up the white because the white at the top of this is gonna be the next stitch. Pull that so it's tight and then work across back to the white working over the purple. And this is the wrong side of your work. So for the whole entire piece, you are using the same, you don't have to cut the yarn because we're just carrying it over to the sides. Just try to cover up as be cover it up as best as you can. And like I said, the, the your colors that you choose will probably help with that. If you use two sort of um, not as contrasting colors, it will cover it up a little bit more. And I think on hers she used uh, Shep. 
Shechi's, I don't know how to say it, soft fun. And as you can see, you can barely see the how she worked over the, the cream color here. You can barely see it peeking out. So it's probably more of a thicker yarn and these colors don't cr contrast too much. Okay, so we're just working to the end of our uh, row. It's the wrong side. I skipped a row, but normally the um, the even rows will be the front and the odd rows will be the wrong, or the, the right side and the odd rows will be the wrong side. So see, we just have one little purple there. So now, because we worked this way, since we're gonna turn and get back to the right side, we're gonna have to start working from this side of the chart. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we're gonna do eleven of the white. Try not to tangle my balls here. And I'm just going to chain up one, and when I turn my work, I want to turn it so that this strand stays on the back because now we're back to the right side. So see how I did that? So here's the strand and we have to pull it up to here so we can work over it. So just wrote the way you turn it, you just rotate it like the opposite way that you would. So there it is. It's right there and it doesn't show on the front side of your work. And then we just work right back over it. That's one two, three, four, five, six. And I believe all of the patterns in this booklet are just single crochets. So if you think about it, it's really kind of a beginner or, you know, pretty basic technique because if you can do a single crochet, and that's one of the first things that people learn, then you can do this. You just have to get used to working over the strands. Let's see how many I have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now I need 11. So that's 10. Now on the 11th one, I have to switch my colors. So I'm gonna go in, yarn up, pull up a loop so I can make the, the actual legs of the stitch, which are these two. And then the purple is gonna be the top of the next stitch. Now this is the front of my work, so these strands can stay to the back, right? So when I drop the white, I'm gonna drop it to the back because we wanna always keep the strands on the wrong side of your work. Pull that loop through, and then as you can see, if I turn it to the side like that, that becomes the top of the next stitch, that loop that you just pulled through. And make sure you're working over the white. And we're gonna do, that's one, two, and we need three purples. So on the third one, we're gonna switch color again. So there, I've started the stitch. I'm gonna drop the purple to the back. Don't drop it all the way because you still have to work over it, but don't pull it to the front. Put it over there so you can work over it and then start on the white again. So you see, even though I just switched to white, I have three purples, one, two, and three. And then the rest working over the purple strand. Pull, just pull it tight. Not too tight, so that way, you know, it, it makes it shaped weird, but tight enough so it's, so it's covering as much of those strands as it can. And you really, um, when you do this tapestry crochet too, it's fun because you don't have to, really you just have to work from the chart. You don't even need to read the written instructions. So let's see what I did here. So I finished 
with, I have one, two, three, four, five, six of the white. Let's see if I did that right. Here's where I did um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then three of the purple, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the white again. But see what I did? I I, mic I messed up my my rows. So if you mess up your rows and you do, I think I was supposed to do 10 white instead of 11, and then I did three, and then I should have had, I had six, but I should have had seven. So look what happened when I did that. It's not sitting on top of there. This is the right side. It's not sitting on top of there, right? So this should be, this little stitch that I did here should be right here in the center. So that's the thing. <laughs> you really have to, I mean, you can get the technique right, but if you mess up your blocks and don't do the blocks, the r exact right amount of blocks, it's gonna be, you're gonna mess up like I just did. So the main thing to remember, and let me, this out a little bit. So work, work row one, turn your work, and then when you're on the wrong side, you're gonna work row two, turn your work, and then you're back on the right side. So the odd numbers are the right side. So what you can do is just count, and right here, how many, so eight whites, one purple, and then 11 whites again, and then turn your work, remember you're back to the back side, and then you do 10, three, and seven, or whatever it was. So you can just write all over your chart um, to, rem to make sure you're working the right number. So here's a heart the way it should look. So as you can see, let me see, this is the right side. So they should be sitting on top nicely, but you're always gonna have those strands that you're working over because when you're switching colors, that just happens. And then this is the bat, what the back of it looks like. It's not as pretty as the front, but it's still kind of reversible. So I'd say then, and you can see how I worked over that purple. You can see the purple peeking out there. So I'd say, um, thanks for showing this. Let me make sure I got it. It looks good with the other color peeking through. Thanks. Lizzie says it looks good anyway. And I think that's probably like an experimentation. Oh, Star's Holiday Celebration says I shared your video. Thank you. Experimenting with the yarn and just getting, um, you know, the right yarn and the right colors to where that it's not peeking through so much. So you can see the technique that we did. We're working over each strand. We're pulling, um, we're just pulling them up the sides as we go along. But I'd say that probably the most important takeaway is make sure you're counting. After each row that you finished, count it to make sure you have the right amount on this side and the right amount on this side and the right amount um, of your center colors so you don't mess up. But if you do do that, then you just have to rip it back and redo it. So if I were to rip this back, then I would just do, I actually only have to probably go to here and just do that 10 make sure i change on the 10th one instead of the 11th and then they would stack up evenly right so it's easy to fix your mistakes and let me see if i have any questions julie says i have to go is this recorded? yes it's sorry julie she's probably gone but yes this is recorded um so you can watch it whenever you want thanks for all the little tips i never work in the back bumps yes i always work in the back bumps because look let me show you why look see how see how much nicer that looks it looks like a regular row of single crochets right there and if you don't work in the back bumps it just doesn't look like that i i almost never do it anymore um but let me just show you really, really quick while we're discussing it because I'm always curious if people work in the back bumps or not, because I always, always do. So if you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you just, oh, I cut that one, hold on, sorry. That was like a cut piece, I can't show you. 
let me see what it looks like if we don't work in the back bumps. And sometimes it doesn't matter if you're working an edge around it, but I, even, I think even if you are working an edge around it, it's better to work in the back bumps because it makes it easier on you when you do go to work that edge or that border around it. If you don't work into the back bumps, you're just, I guess, going right into the center of the chain like that, right? So if you go into the center of the chain, I just don't like it because these... I don't know, they sort of blend into each other and it's hard for me to see what's happening. Like, this is the next chain. This is the next chain. See, I'm not working into the back bumps. And then it's really pulling them apart, I think. Kind of loosening them a lot. And then, at the very last, when you look and see, so there's my row of single crochets, right? I didn't work into the back bumps. If you see what the bottom looks like, it just doesn't look good. So even if you are, if that's your edge, it doesn't look as neat. And if you go to work back into it, it's hard to tell where to work into it because you're not really working under two, like the V that you're used to working under, you see? But if you work in the back bumps, you have a regular row of single crochets where you have the V, which is the one strand and the one strand, and you work directly under the two strands of the V. As opposed to this. So you see, it's harder to work into that. So that's my uh, tip. I always work into the back bumps. And it's easy to do once you get the hang of it. The back bumps just for if you have, if I have any new newbies here. Here's my chain. We we'll always talk about little tips before we go. <laughs> Here's my chain. And it's very clear to see once you really take a look at it. Here's like the chain part. And you see this little bump right there. Let's see if I turn it this way, if it's if you can see it more. It looks like the wave or the, the hill, right? So that's why they call it a bump. It really just bumps, bumps up. So you just work your stitch directly into that bump. And once you get into the habit of doing that, it's you're gonna thank yourself because it's always gonna be neater in the end. So I hope that helps everyone, and um, I hope you try out some tapestry crochet if you haven't tried it. Don't screw up, and you'll see right away if you mess up. You'll see that they're not laying right on top of each other. But hopefully yours look uh, nicer like that. And remember to use your chart. So we talked about how to use the chart. Um, and you can always rewatch this video if you need a little extra or if you want to just watch it a couple times to make sure you get the hang of it and I'm checking to make sure I don't have anybody who asked a question before I go and okay let me say goodbye you guys so before I go um, thank you so much for watching I hope I, I feel like I wanted to say something else and I forgot but hopefully I didn't um, so yeah this was the farmhouse mug rugs the link is in the description if you want to check out this book and get it. Um, and also there's a link for the brand new kit if you wanted to check out the kit. And this was the other new thing we talked about. Let's get organized. And please join me here on Annie's Facebook page every Friday at 12 noon Eastern where we have another crochet tutorial. And I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. Thanks for joining me. Oh, wait, I know what it was. <laughs> the block party. I almost forgot, you guys. Next week, we're doing our block party. If you um, join me usually on Fridays, you know we do a block party every month at the beginning of the month. So next week starts our 2021 block party. Yes, we are going to keep doing that um, every month. I'm super excited about that. So make sure you join me next week for the February block party. <laughs> we'll see you then. Bye.